everyone. In this video, I want to share with you a STEM project I did with Jessica Jordan and Courtney Gina for a fifth grade science unit. Students took on the role of environmental engineers who designed a solution to reduce the occurrence of algal bloom. I used the following next generation science standards to design the project. We started with the provocation, also known as an entry event or a hook. Students saw multiple images of algal bloom in Singapore and other places in the world. Due to restrictions this year, we did not get the opportunity to take a field trip to visit an area of Singapore that had algal bloom. The goal of this provocation was to generate curiosity and spark interest from the students and have them want to understand the phenomenon. After the provocation, students generated questions that could fit in three categories. The first category of questions uh, would obviously be the cause of the algal bloom. What is algal bloom? What is causing algal bloom? The second category of questions would be about plant growth. What is making the algae grow? How does that work? The third category of questions students would ask is the actual water contamination and how that affects the environment. How does this affect other parts of the ecosystem? What are the consequences for the environment? Each of these categories of questions focused on at least one of the NGSS standards of the unit. Each of these set of questions led to paths of inquiry, a cycle of asking questions, investigating, creating, and reflecting where students would investigate the areas of algal bloom, plant growth, and water contamination. So for these specific questions, students use resources to research the topic, learn how algal blooms are caused, and learn about some of the consequences of the phenomenon. After learning that algal blooms are caused by urban runoff and soil erosion due to rain, students asked questions and investigated how rain works to ultimately develop a model to explain how water cycles from the Earth's surface to the atmosphere and back again. For questions about plant growth, students performed uh, plant experiments and visited the local rainforest to learn how plants need air and water to grow. For the questions, how does this affect other parts of the ecosystem, and what are the consequences for the environment, students compared two environments, an environment with algal bloom, and a similar healthy environment that did not have algal bloom. The goal was to show the difference between a healthy environment that contains a sustainable system of energy flow and matter movement with the algal bloom environment where parts of the environment are affected, and then affects the overall health of the environment. At this point, students already learned um, about one of the Earth's spheres, the atmosphere. Now students can zoom out and see how the geosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and the atmosphere interact within the algal bloom context. We wanted students to apply what they learn in a meaningful way by asking them the following question. How might we reduce the development of algal bloom, which also involved the following engineering standards? The context for this engineering project was in farming areas that were next to bodies of water, like a river. Through rainfall, nutrient-rich soil from the farm erodes off the farmland and into the river. The performance task involved students identifying the problem, the cause of the problem, and the success criteria for their solution, and the constraints within this engineering project. I recommend having students check out the playlist of videos from Crash Course Kids that describes the role of an engineer and what it means to define the problem and define the success criteria. Through this process, students came up with how might we problem statements. Here are the following problem statements students came up with as a class. How might we prevent or limit soil erosion to reduce the amount of nutrients that goes into the water through a cheap method? How might we filter soil from the water to reduce the development of algal bloom? Majority of the students had a problem statement similar to the first one, because since the nutrients are in the soil, they wanted to prevent the soil from going into the water. Students then brainstormed different ways of answering their problem statement. First using divergent thinking to generate a large quantity of ideas, 
encouraging creative ideas, and making sure that there was no judgment, just putting all their ideas onto paper. And then every time there's this, um, there's this like button, the farmers can press, and then the water will leach out again. So basically they're recycling the water. That's kind of what I did in my then they started the convergent thinking to see which of their ideas best solved the problem, making sure that their ideas were simple and cheap as possible. And it was buildable and testable within the testing station we created. After providing feedback to the students, they built their prototypes and tested them in the testing stations. every test, students had to create a seesaw post that required them to record the test, take pictures of the results, then comment on the post that explained in detail whether or not the solution actually met the success criteria, then compare the results from the previous test. They also had to identify failure points or difficulties and then explain one or more changes that they planned to make to improve their prototype. Most of the students created retaining walls or geotextiles to prevent soil erosion. Some also added another mechanism that filtered out more soil from the water that passed the retaining wall or the geotextile. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Special thanks to Jessica and Courtney for collaborating with me on this project.